Exactly one year ago today, I published a video on the cost of building a gaming PC in the year 2018, which I think many of us can consider a dark age for building a gaming PC and the cost of components which were completely out of hand at this time last year. The cost of building a system at that time where I had put together a parts list for a mid-range system came out to around $1,500 and I was actually even able to find a pre-built system from iBuyPower that cost $250 less than what I was able to put together, which is completely opposite of what we had traditionally seen where building a gaming computer could be a way of saving money rather than buying a pre-built, pre-configured hardware system. Gaming system. I don't know why I said hardware system there. That, that was kind of weird. But now, things have changed significantly, because last year we were in the middle of quite a few different crises. We had seen RAM prices going through the roof, which we thought were from shortages, but then we later found out was from price fixing. We also saw flash shortages, so SSD prices were also very high. And last, but certainly not least, was graphics card prices, where even cards like an RX 580 or a GTX 1060, which realistically should have cost between $250 and $300, we're selling for as much as five to $600. Even something like a 1070 was selling for around like $700, just absolutely ludicrous prices. But that has done a completely 180, and you will not believe how affordable of a PC you could put together right now for under $1,000, which would completely stomp all over the PC that I had configured one year ago today. So this might be one of the best, if not the best times to build a gaming rig here in early 2019. But first, I'd like to say a quick thank you to the sponsor for today's video, Dot Tech Domains. So many companies are choosing to use Dot Tech Domains from startups like Shadow.tech all the way to big companies like Viacom as well as CES, the event that I was at just last week in Las Vegas. And for a limited time, if you use my link down in the description below and punch in the code CESGO, you can get yourself 90% off of one, five, and 10 year domains. So be sure to hit up that link down in the description below. Now, obviously, there are several components to building a gaming PC, but without a doubt, the most important component is the graphics card, and that was the one area where we saw last year was the most egregious in terms of price increases because of cryptocurrency mining and the, the general shortage of graphics card across the board from the low end all the way up to the high end, which saw a inflation in prices. But now, that is not the case at all. You can now go over to Amazon, which I'll have links to all of the parts down in the description below for the system I'm going to show you here, which costs under $1,000 even if you go for a higher-end graphics card. So, the XFX RX 580, this was the best deal I could find at a 580 right now over on Amazon, and I pretty much did all Amazon shopping for this, so you might even be able to put together a system for cheaper. I didn't even try that hard to build a system for $1,000. I just went around on Amazon, I put together a part so in like five minutes that would be a kick-ass system for the low to mid for the mid-range not low range definitely in the mid-range for 2019 this card is selling for hundred and ninety dollars and at that price I don't think you could really argue that it would be worth going out and getting the new RX 590 which launched in the end of 2018 which is basically a refresh of the RX 580 with a little bit better clock speeds and slightly better performance but those are retailing for up around three hundred dollars so I don't think it would make much sense to spend an extra $110 roughly to get an RX 590, but at $190, so under 200 bucks, the RX 580 is a very compelling price, and there are several of these out there in the wild on Amazon, Newegg. This is just the cheapest one that I found in a quick search. However, if you wanted to go to the next price up, we are looking really at the RTX 2060, I think is the next logical choice going from the 580, and those are now available for $350. There are several variants, as you can see here, over on Newegg for $350, which would be a killer card as these compete directly with the likes of the 1070 Ti, GTX 1080, sort of, but it's definitely faster than the RX 580 and the 590, and for an extra $150, that price is very likely justified on these cards, so I feel like this is kind of the best bang for the buck right now besides the RX 580, which would be a little bit at the lower end, but no matter which of these cards you go with, the build I'm going to be showing you throughout this video could be had for under a thousand bucks. Now for the CPU, I think one of the best deals you can get right now 
is the Ryzen 5 2600. Now this price could fluctuate, but right now it's selling for 165 and it's been at that price for a while, pretty much since like before Black Friday. So it seems like the prices on these are coming down. We do know that there is a seven nanometer Ryzen lineup coming later this year. But if we're talking about early 2019, putting together a system right now, I think this is the best bang for the buck processor because if you go with something Intel, it'll be a little bit faster in terms of IPC. It's gonna have higher clock speeds, but you're gonna be spending at the bare minimum, even if you want like an 8700K or a 9700K, you're looking at spending double this, almost du double this if not more for one of those processors and you're, talking about a very insignificant amount of performance over the Ryzen 2600 that you would really be able to see at the mid-range. For a motherboard, obviously if you go with Ryzen, this is one of the areas they kind of take advantage because you can get a cheaper motherboard and still overclock. This is the Asus B450, which is a board that I have personally tested. I have used, this was made at the time when Ryzen 2 came out, so you don't have to worry about BIOS flashing or anything like that to be able to get the Ryzen second gen working like you might on some of the B350 boards. And I've used several of the ASUS Prime boards, not this one exactly, but I've never had an issue with them in the past and I've actually had some of my best overclocks on the budget ASUS boards. So they are definitely something worth considering for right around a hundred bucks. Now, RAM was another area where prices were just through the roof last year at this time. You were looking at spending close to $300 for 16 gigabytes of RAM. Thankfully, those prices have come down and this is price has been like this since around Black Friday, if not about a week or two before. And I'm glad to see that it's actually stayed there because this is one of my favorite kits of RAM. I've used it in several systems. It's Corsair Vengeance LPX, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So it's two eight gig sticks at 3000 megahertz, which is pretty fast. It has latency 15. So it's you can definitely get faster RAM out there. Um, but I, I've used this, I've tested it with Ryzen, and in my experience, the um, default XMP profiles on these have worked every single time, and yeah, Ryzen does benefit from faster RAM, so I would consider 3000 megahertz kind of the entry point, um, you know, for RAM, and if you can get faster for a better price, or th roughly the same price, then I say go for it, as long as you know it works well with Ryzen, but I can personally vouch for this kit right here. When it comes to power supplies, you got a lot of options out there, but I don't like to skip and go for really cheap power supplies, but I also don't like to spend an exorbitant amount of money. And I usually find out more often than not that I come back to EVGA power supplies because they kind of sit right there in the middle, but the quality is actually very near the top as they are using super floor PSUs, some of the best you can actually get. And this 650 watt gold rated semi-modular, so you've got the power supply cable pre-connected, big whoop, you know, you're going to be using that cable anyway. So you're not going to have a massive spaghetti nest of monster, a spaghetti monster of cables, you know, sitting in the bottom of your case unused. So yeah, this is a pretty good choice right here. Five year warranty from EVGA. I don't think you can go wrong at 70 bucks for 650 watt, which would be more than enough to power this system as well as any upgrades that you wanted to throw at it later on down the road. Now, obviously for cases, just like power supplies, you have a ton of options, you know, kind of choose what best suits your budget and what you personally like. But the best case that I found, um, that something I liked aesthetically, but also fit within the price rack that I wanted to go for, the Fantex Eclipse was, is an ATX mid-tower case. It's got tempered glass. It's around $60 right now, 62 for the black version, $60 for the black and red. So depending on which color you want, um, they also have a white one here for 60 bucks. So you've got a few different color options there you can go with on this case, but there are, you know, almost endless possibilities when it comes to cases. If you just look down here, you can see how many cases are available on Amazon. So choose what fits your budget, try to read some reviews and see it, make sure it's gonna have decent cable management. You're not gonna run into any issues like that. But Fantex cases have traditionally been on point. Um, for SSDs, this is another area where prices have come down so much. I covered these on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I picked up one terabyte NVMe drives for under $200. Absolutely insane. You can get a Western Digital, Western Digital Blue Drive right now, 500 gig for 70 bucks, which will be awesome. For your boot drive, if you need a little bit more storage, go with the one terabyte. I've used these before. These are selling for 142 right now. They were a bit cheaper at Black Friday. They were around 120 to 125. Um, you know, so be on the lookout for some good deals, but Western Digital Blue Drives, Crucial Drives, Sand Discs, these are some of the areas that, uh, some of the SSDs that are considerably cheaper and you can get a one terabyte drive for under $150 or you can just go with a 500 gig for the boot and then pick up a mechanical drive if you need to. So what is the total cost of this system here with all of the parts that I mentioned here? Minus the graphics card, the total 
comes in at just $593. If we round up for like shipping and taxes, let's say 600 bucks even for this build without any graphics card whatsoever. If we were to go with the high-end GPU, the RTX 2060 at $350, that would bring our cost up to $950. So $950 for the build I just mentioned with an RTX 2060, which is going to be an excellent 1080p high refresh rate gaming card, or you can even do 1440p high settings with ease as this card competes directly and if not beats, the 1070 Ti. Now, if you are wanting to stay a little a bit under that, staying closer to the $800 price point, go with the first card I mentioned, an RX 580, really any variant, as long as you're staying around $200, but the best one I found was $190 on the XFX card over on Amazon, but obviously that can fluctuate as prices change over time. So for under a thousand bucks, we're looking at a kick-ass 1080p and entry-level 1440p gaming PC. And that is why I think this is the best time that it's been in recent memory to build a gaming PC, certainly a hell of a lot better than what you could have built on this exact date just last year. And I would put this system with the RTX 2060 against the system I put together last year with a 1070 all day, every day of the week. And I bet this PC would not only trounce it, but it's also costing about 33% less at under $1,000. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the this bank for the buck 2019 PC build. Are you going to be building a rig in 2019? Have you been waiting, you know, forever? Because I feel like this is the best time. And even though there's some more hardware launches on the horizon, that's really always going to be the case. We've got a new Ryzen lineup. We've got Radeon 7 coming out next month, but that's definitely more at the enthusiast and it's $700. And we'll have to wait and see what the performance is on that. But I think right now for the mid range, this is an excellent time to build a rig so you can, you know, I would say go out and do it if you can. If you've got the money, if you've been saving up, this is a good time to go out and start, um, you know, at least parting out your build and checking out prices and things. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. As always, I do look forward to the discussion and the comments down below. So be sure to let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, let me know by... Uh, leaving a thumbs up and subscribing if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content as soon as it goes up live here on the channel. And I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Tarana.